What up, players? Necromancer Lewis up in this mud. Today, me and my good friend Wobosh Tay are gonna teach you how to paint up a skeleton for the Vampire Counts range. So stay tuned. All right, so let's dig right in. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our skeleton with Citadel Foundation Colors Deneb Stone. They really should label this, uh, relabel this, and just call it Bone Base because it makes such a great base for any kind of bone you're going to do. So we're going to paint all the bone areas of the model with this and then we're going to take our trusty bolt gun metal and we're going to paint all of the silver metallic areas with that. Okay, so... Hopefully this new uh, camera setup works and it won't go out of focus as much. And you might have seen from my other videos or where I've mentioned that I always, I always prime my models with this silver base coat uh, undercoat spray. Or not silver, I'm sorry, but gray. I found that gray seems to work really well. I was thinking though for these skeleton models maybe I'll go with uh, white instead since they're all gonna end up white anyways but white is really unforgiving and um, and if you're a, a new or inexperienced painter then white might seem might seem a little bit too too hard uh, base to work with. Now that's not to say that, uh, you know, it's not, oops, too much water, that you shouldn't use white, um, or that you can't if you're a new painter. I've seen a lot of newer, inexperienced painters use white base coats and like them just fine. But for myself, I remember when I was starting off, white was not very good to me. Alright, so, as you can see, I'm getting my bone colors all over the place, and because this is the first step in the painting, that is okay. Anything can be fixed. That is what I've learned. If you, <laughs> if you get yourself, oops, if you get yourself, um, discouraged because of mistakes you make in the beginning, then you'll never finish. So just keep going, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> I was um, watching my Lizardman Saurus Old Blood unboxing video. Dude, you could totally hear my brother snoring. Awesome, so funny. Because I was like, wow, why am I breathing so hard? And I was like, oh wait, no, it's my brother. Totally crashed out next to me. It's not me. Alright, so you can't really see it, but what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of water to the paint before I apply it, just to thin it down a little bit. Are those his hip bones connected to the leg bones? I think so. I'm gonna hit it. I'm gonna hit it just in case. Work faster! All right, Lewis. Thank you. All right, next. I'm gonna get to the bolt gun metal. I'm going to paint the entire shield in metal. Okay. 
that oval bracelet he's got. his breastplate. Yeah, so the more I look at the new releases for the vampire accounts, the more excited I get. It's going to be a great, a great release this month. As you can see, I'm also hitting the helmet. I'm not going to hit the uh, the bat wings at the top, but I am going to get the rest of it there. whether or not to paint the shield, I don't think so. I'm also going to hit these uh, scales at the bottom. There's a little scale male skirt. Okay. Good, good. Yeah, it's good. So I've decided that I'm going to be painting this guy in the old school colors of Sylvania. So that's a lot of deep reds, rich purples, and the colors I'm going to use and I'm going to alternate are lich purple for the purples, nice deep dark purple, and mechrite red is going to be our base for the reds. So while I'm doing that, I'm also going to be picking out areas where I want to end up being bronze, and uh, on those areas, like for the shield, I'm going to be painting the bottom part of the shield in red and then the skull and the wings in bronze eventually. So I'm going to base coat in Camry Brown. And that's a change from Calvin Brown because um, I just feel like doing something different. So you, you could really base coat any color as long as one, it's one of the darker foundation colors because that is going to help you eventually when you're, um, when you're painting a darker metal rather than painting the uh, the bronze in Ian and Dark Sun. So look how immediately the shield pops with this color. Yeah, that coven throne with the with the girly vampires on it. Oh, so sick. So wrong. QW, why do you take all my money? And then it's really up to you as a painter if you're gonna go with this route. Um, some people I've seen just have armies with red in their color, as their color. Some people I've seen just stick to black. So if you decide to go with black, then I would just paint over whatever you're gonna paint in black, um, in Chaos Black again. Okay, so I think what I want, because the red is such a vivid, striking color, I'm gonna paint the pennant on the spear in purple. Too much water there. Also because I'm going to eventually paint this guy's that crest on his helmet in red as well. Okay. I 
think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the bottom part over here red, paint that in purple, and paint those tatters of what was once under his armor in black. So I'm going to take my Chaos Black and I'm going to repaint those. These tatters right there. And looks like I'm at my limit so I'm going to stop and start again. Alright, here we go. Just about to finish with the head crest. And I was thinking while I was painting it, you know, if these skeletons are wearing what they wore in life when they died, then I kind of feel bad for whoever had to wear this bat wing thing on his helmet. That looks kind of silly. I mean, I know he was a champion in the unit, but um, yeah, it must have been hard to get people to listen to him when he's walking around with that helmet with the bat wings on it. I'm just saying. Cause you once, twice, three times a little. Oh my gosh, I ate so much over this last holiday season. It's hard not to, right? But, oh, so much good food. Oh, this is so awesome. I'm painting and filming and you guys are watching. And I'm totally not being sarcastic. Like, this is what I've been aiming for. Being able to shoot war boss tutorials live in, in real time. It's such a hassle having to hold the camera up and then say what I'm doing and then put the camera down and paint and come back. So this is, this is a dream come true. Alright, just about done with that. Man, it's a real skill. I take my hand, tip my hat, tip my hat to a uh, girl painting and unless they've got this down to an art form. To everybody else who's done these tutorials, these live tutorials, like General Splatten, all you guys, you're all my heroes and it's so so hard. Or not hard, but it's just such a different way of doing things. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little bit of purple on the these little, um, I don't know what they are, they look like little pennants hanging from the belt. Then after this, I am going to color the belt in Calton Brown, give it a nice dark leather, leathery look. On to the next step. Start that. Yes, start to set. <clears throat> For me, this is um, the hardest part where. It's like the first step, the base coats, everything looks sloppy. Um, it's really not till you lay down the... Um, am I using Camry Brown? Oh my gosh. I'm using Camry Brown, I'm so sorry. It's not really till you get to the wash application where 
things really start to come together. For me at least. Washes and highlights. Okay, then I'm also, while I've got the browns out, I am going to paint the um, brass area of the shield. I'd also like to know what you all think about the uh, the new Von Karstein shield pack, if you think that's worth it to get. It's basically a bunch of uh, Von Karstein themed shields, which I don't even know, what does that constitute? More, more bat-like iconography? <laughs> I don't know. I I think that might be the one release I will not be picking up. So now that that's done, we are going to give our model a wash of bad black in the bones. And then while that's still wet, we're going to add Devlin Mud. So we don't want to put too much, but our two wash colors for that. Get this into frame. Bad black and Devlin Mud. We're also going to wash the purple with Leviathan purple. And we're going to wash our red with Baal red. There you go, looks like mine is almost all out. So, the, the, um, we're also going to wash the armor. The armor is going to be washed with Bad Up Black as well not Devlin mud. So we might as well get started. And I think it would also be good to paint the brass on beforehand, before we do that. So probably should have done that. Um, that's okay, we can do that right now. Paint the paint the brass on the shield in dwarf bronze. That's no problem, we can do that. Let me just finish painting the upper part of the skeleton with bad and black for a second. So, dwarf bronze onto the brassy areas, which for me is this shield emblem.
message coming out very nicely. Thank you, Lewis. You do good work, war boss. Thank you. For a douchebag. Hey. <laughs> Come on. It's not very nice. Okay. So, the thing about models is because you're looking down at them most of the time, you always want to be mindful about what you can see from above. That looked like too much, too much water. But what I mean by that is like, you know, when looking down at the model, what can the person see? As opposed to looking from beneath, like, like that. So I always try to get the, the highlights and the uh, coverage of the paint. I'm always trying to be mindful of that. <laughs> right, so, how's that going? Yeah, there we go. She was just about done up, still looks kind of wet. Might do with another layer of dwarf bronze. Let's hit the bottom half of the model with the washes. You can see I painted the inside of the shield black. For this one, it was because I wanted the eye to be more attracted to the colors rather than painting any kind of intricate design on the inside of the shield. Some of the shields, like the coffin lid shield, are um, wooden on the inside, so for that you want to keep the same kind of... Oh, sorry about that, the film ran out, so um, I went over my limit. So I'm going to stop now and give my wash some time to dry, as should you all. If you paint while your wash is still wet and some of it gets, um, gets moved around, for those of you, of, of you who haven't used wash too much, oh gross, what is that? Um, then, sorry, there's like a little moth flying around, then the, the wash in the recesses could come out, it could make water stains, and um, ruin the work that you've already done. So it's always good whenever you put a, um, a bit of wash on your models to just leave them there, let it dry, go and do something else for a little while, and come back to it. So while I pause this video, what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to be basing the model in my particular way of basing. And um, by the time I'm done with that, the washes should all be dry, and then we can get on to highlighting our model. Okay, as you can see, the washes have just about dried. I've started to highlight up the silver with some bolt gun metal. As you can see, I've started to dry brush a little bit onto the back of the armor and onto the spear. And um, so I'm gonna continue doing that now with chainmail, and I'm gonna show you my technique of how I do that. So if you take your chainmail and you put just a little bit of paint on the brush, then wipe most of it off so that you don't have too much of it, and then find where you want the, the light to reflect. So for example, I've been painting, uh, I've been dry brushing the bolt gun metal onto that area of the spear, so I'm going to continue by lightly just feathering and dry brushing the chainmail onto the center of where the bolt gun metal is. That way you still keep your wash around the rest of the spear. It creates a natural shadow while at the same time bringing up the light. And then when you get to the, the edge of the spear blade, then, then you can really just feather the edges. And if you want, down the center. So I'm gonna do the same thing from this side find where the light naturally hits and 
Let's bring up the the reflection. And then bring up the oops. Bring up the spear tip. There you go. And same thing for the back plate. You just want to hit the middle. And then brush the edges. Alright, so now we're going to get to the highlighting of the bronze and take just a little bit of your chainmail again. But instead of dry brushing, you're going to find where the light naturally hits the top of the bronze. You're going to do a fine line painting. Oops, that might have been a little thick. To make like a little reflection, reflective. off of the tops. There you go. There. Next what we're going to do is we're going to take some blood red highlight up the shield and all of the red areas and I'm just going to be going for the tips and the edges like the cloth let's start off with the cloth You could really do, if you want, two or three layers of this blood red as a highlight color. So I'm going to try doing that. I'm going to do one layer here to show you where I'm highlighting and then I'm going to let that dry, pause the camera, and then do my second layer and show that to you when that is done. Save time. And As you can see, blood red is a really vibrant color and it really picks out the, the highlights, which is why you, you want to use it pretty sparingly. Because if this was our base color, it would be hard to highlight up, it would be so bright. thing we're going to do in red are the head crests. So, I'm just going to hit the, what looks like the spine of the crests and not the little tatters of cloth inside. So 
a second layer of paint should make that pop a little bit more. But for now, also I found if you accidentally put too much, if you accidentally load up too much paint on your brush and get that on the model, then it's no problem to just wipe it off really quickly. It hasn't set yet. You can you can blend it with other colors. Um, sometimes I find myself mis judging the amount of paint that I load my brush up with, so don't worry about that. It happens all the time. And the shield is, I think, the trickiest part because when you have the majority of a surface area painted one color, you want to just make sure you're keeping a good eye on the rest of the model as to how much of the highlight color you apply. See like what I just did was I put a lot of the color right into the center but then I feathered it out to kind of even out where where all that paint goes. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that then you should wipe off the majority of your paint onto a napkin first. There. So I'm gonna finish the second layer of blood red paint. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight up the bone and um, a little bit of the purple as well. And once we highlight up the bone, then we're gonna age the armor a little bit and actually that's gonna be the last, the last step in this model. So um, I'll come back once the reds, second layer of reds has been applied. All right, just a couple more steps before we're finished. The first thing is we're gonna highlight up the bone and we're gonna use Deneb Stone to um, bring up our base coat color. And um, again, we're gonna leave the darker shading in the recesses and we're just gonna hit the areas that look like they're um, hit by the light. So you wanna, this is, this is the point in these later stages of painting the model where you really wanna make sure that you don't load up your brush too much with the paint and that you put some of it on your you know your napkin or your Kleenex that you're using to wipe it away so that you're not dumping a lot of paint onto your model Especially when you get to fiddly areas like the finger bones, you want to make sure that the paint on your brush is pretty dry and doesn't go into the recesses. Or else you're gonna do or undo all of the hard work that the wash did for you. At this point, a lot of painters like to dry brush bone highlights and um, if you're doing a whole horde of these or if you're not going to be doing a very um, detailed paint job if you just want to get them done then then dry brushing is fine and you can get a large amount of troops on the table for it that short amount of time and work So once the denim stone is applied, the next highlight we're going to work in is bleached bone, which is really yellow and creamy. And it's not as, as light or, or white as the denim stone color is. So for, for applying the, the bleached bone, you really want to make sure that you don't um, have too much of it on the brush and that you just hit the edges and the, the raised areas like at the joints 
up at the shoulders, at the elbow here. So of course, as in all of my other tutorials, because skeletons are a core troop, you might not want to spend this long and do this many steps with each rank and file. You might want to spend this long for your standard bearer, maybe, or for any champions in the unit. Or if you're really devoted and you really want to have a good looking vampire count's army, then you could spend this long on each of your troops. Personally, I would say a good tabletop quality is would be to, um, for your regular line troops, not even bothering with the Deneb Stone highlight of the uh, that we just did. Um, stopping with the with the shading is totally fine. So now I'm going onto the face. And I'm sort of doing a dry brushing, what is that? Dry brushing type of type of thing there. You can see that. Okay, so the last highlight we're gonna add is the skull white. And this is really the last highlight for the bone. And with this, you really want to be careful not to add too much of it to the brush. This is the, the most extreme highlight that you're going to get. And um, you really don't want it to be very obvious. You just want enough of it to pick up raised areas and even then you want to make sure you feather it out Okay, now we're going to um, age the armor and add some verdigris and patina to it. And for that, we're going to use our hawk turquoise color. So we're gonna water down, really water down the hawk turquoise and we're going to put it in between the, um, in the folds where you see that um, age has, has rusted and pitted the armor through anywhere in there. Okay, so water down our hot turquoise and this is where having a wet palette or a napkin that you can wash off the majority of your paint is going to be good to have all right so we've got my hot turquoise trying to paint on the outside where the brass and the bronze meets the red of the shield but you can also get right there in the center too
Now there's another way that you can show oxidization on your armor, and that would be to water down and paint in bestial brown instead. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it look like the dirt has caked into the armor. And um, that's another effective way I've seen of aging your armor or your metallics. I've seen it done well on Necrons, I've seen it done well on other models, but for me this kind of um, oxidization I think is a little more interesting looking. Probably because I've done that other bestial brown kind of aging and weathering on, on my orcs. So what I've done now is I've decided that I want not too much oxidization in that one area, so I'm just painting back in with a little bit of bolt gun metal, and that covers up your mistakes. So, um, the main lesson is, don't worry if you make a mistake, you can always cover it up. There is nothing, no mistake too big that can't be covered up and re retried. Okay, and let me just double check that that is the last thing to do. Repaint this little black sliver. And there you have it! A completed vampire's, Vampire Counts skeleton for the Vampire Counts range. Um, if you're painting up a whole batch of these, then uh, you can obviously take less steps than I did, but it's um, really good to be able to paint a couple of them in as well of a detail as you can just to show off your range as a painter. So thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. What do you think, Louis? I like it. And we'll see you in the next one.